This morning, the PCE number price index year over year came out hotter than expected. And this comes off the back of what yesterday was hotter than expected inflation data and cooling GDP numbers. We got the advanced GDP number as we talked in yesterday's video, which came out lighter than expected. And it's shaping up to throw a little bit of a wrench into uh, the story that is the stock market as well as the gold market. We got a lot of stuff to talk about in this video, so let's jump in. So yesterday, the stock market jumped in the post uh, New York hours because we had pretty good earnings from Microsoft and Google. In fact, if we take a quick look at those companies, what you can see is that Google shot straight up and Microsoft, uh, so did they, right? So basically we had some good numbers out of these two behemoth companies. And remember that good earnings from the top companies in the US is very crucial to the stock market doing well or doing poorly. So we saw good numbers, but is that enough to stop the uh, hotter than expected year over year inflation reading we got this morning? It doesn't seem like it. Stock market still wavering here and uh, I've pointed out and I want to do an update on my current perspective on the S&P 500. So from a technical perspective, we have something to work with here. We had a really strong close yesterday uh, in the SPX. What we can see is that we actually closed above this level of resistance and we've got to give bulls their credit. This is actually a pretty impressive hold. And now as we pull back, I am still sidelined. I can't take a trade and I'll tell you why from a, a fundamental perspective in just a moment. But from a technical perspective, we got to give the bulls their flowers. This is pretty good, right? We had a nice little higher low if you wanted to you know, point out this, this wick low that we formed yesterday. Nice shoot off of that low into the earnings, which came out real strong. And uh, now we're seeing a little bit of a give back on, again, hotter than expected inflation. Now, uh, with that being said, we also saw cooling advanced GDP numbers yesterday. So it's been a mixed bag this week in terms of the stock market specifically. But from a technical perspective, again, nice breakout here. That's looking good. I'd love to see if we can continue to hold this. And if we do get some sort of you know strength in the trend forming, uh, I may still be a buyer. I'll show you my current breakdown as to why I can't actually justify taking a long trade, though technically I am still bullish. And I'm saying technically as in technical analysis wise, this looks strong. It looks like we're having a nice bounce here but fundamentally here's my issue so i've pulled up the indices scanner on the edge finder where we can take a look at all the data that goes into scoring the edge finder and its interpretation of whether or not an asset is bullish or bearish here's what's holding me back the trend, again, still kind of lower, right? In the daily chart, we've still seen the, the sell-off be pretty strong. Sellers are still around. Until that breaks out, uh, that's going to keep this score in the neutral camp. Now, if we continue to trend higher, again, another break through the highs, that's probably going to be one leg higher. That's going to get us bullish on the stock market here or the S&P 500. Uh, because when we look at the economic data, again, GDP numbers, not so great. Uh, services PMI, not so great. Uh, interest rates rising, not so great inflation, not so great. So there's some things here that worry me about being fundamentally bullish. Uh, but there's also strength in the manufacturing sector. We have retail sales uh, that looked good. Employment change and unemployment jobs look healthy. So there's some competing economic data here. So we get a mixed bag and a mixed bag leads us with a neutral reading on the S&P. So outside of the S&P 500, let's take a look at some other assets here for a moment. And what we can see is that we do have things like silver, dollar CAD, dollars are, German 30, Aussie Kiwi, Dollar Swiss. These are some of your current bullish readings. Now, somebody asked me, they said, Nick, Dollar Czar, it's a very bullish reading, but Dollar Czar has been moving lower. So is this, uh, you know, is your software just wrong? Well, First of all, the software itself does not give you a timing of when you should buy or when you should sell a particular asset. In fact, Dollar Czar has been a bullish reading on the Edge Finder for a little bit, and I'll show you that. So here is Dollar Czar, and remember that a score of above five is considered a bullish reading, and you can see that we've been bullish on the Edge Finder for a very long time here overall on USDZAR. Now, uh, when you see that though, and then you say, well, well, it's coming down now, remember the Edge Finder is not a timing uh, system. The Edge Finder helps you to combine all 
all the fundamental analysis into a single thing and then you still have to take a look at your own technical setups it's why that you know when i when i'm talking about a trading setup on the s p 500 i need the fundamentals to align but i also need the technicals to allow me to enter the trade with good risk management principles all that good stuff like we usually would with any sort of trading one signal that the edge finder has been uh recently calling out for was bullishness on silver and if i take a look at silver this is a trade that i already have on right now um we're seeing a very slow resumption of the upward trend i would say uh because we're looking at the daily chart you can see we had this wick low uh you know shot all the way up here to that 29.80 we barely missed hitting the 30 dollar uh price on silver then we pulled back we tagged this level to 50% retracement level, and that was good enough for me to go ahead and get long with confirmation from the edge finder. Stop below the low, and uh, so far it hasn't moved that much, but I'm still holding on to a bullish trade on silver. And here is the current PNL on that trade. You can see it's up just about 539 bucks. Real quick, I wanted to throw a shout out to our stream sponsor here on the A1 Trading Show, Forex VPS. If you haven't heard of Forex VPS before, they are a dedicated hosting platform where traders, especially algorithmic traders, can set up an in the cloud computer to run their MT4 24 seven. If you have any experience trading with robots on MetaTrader 4 using expert advisors, they have to remain up all the time and keeping your computer on is not always practical if you have like a power outage or that sort of thing. Thing. And with Forex VPS, you can set up a dedicated hosted computer in the cloud to host your MT4 or 5 platform. They have the fastest execution in the industry with latency less than one millisecond, which means when you place trades or your system places trades, it's near instant. So I've got my VPS open here from Forex VPS, and you can see I just want to show how quick the latency is here. So if I click sell, you can see it is right away. I'm in the trade, all set, as if I was sitting on this computer even though it's somewhere in the cloud. And for viewers on my channel, you can get 20% off your first VPS by using the link and the promo code TN20 down below. Again, 20% off with the code TN20, which you can find down below in the description. In just a few hours, we will be getting the latest round of COT data, which of course the commitment of traders data tells us what the institutional money has been doing week over a week. Uh, it's a very useful tool for just getting a general pulse or a check as to what non-commercials, aka large reportable, uh, you know, you know, hedge funds and banks, etc., what they're buying and what they're selling. We will be getting that latest round of data this afternoon, which will be very interesting to see whether or not they bought up the stock market during its recent dip, like they did last week, or if perhaps they reversed that, sold, what they do with gold, what they do with the dollar, etc. And just a last call today is Friday. We are ending our sale on the Edge Finder. This is the biggest sale of the entire year. So if you have not already locked in your 45% off discount on the Edge Finder, again, this is going to be your final true last call for 45% off. If you'd like to lock in that price before it does end, click the first link in the description. It will allow you to chat directly with someone on my staff to get access to a copy of the tool before that sale ends. Again, it's a real person that you can speak to. If you have any questions about how the tool might help you, feel free to chat with us. We'd be happy to work with you. And looking at gold here, similar to the silver market, what it does look like is we may have found a short-term low or bottom here. You can see, again, really strong upward trend, a corrective move that came into play. And I think that we needed this on gold, silver, you know, the stock market, several things had become uh, somewhat overbought in the short term. We now see a pullback. And I think that this gives the gold market, a, you know, room to expand higher. Now, if you're a bear on gold or looking for more move to the downside, uh, what you'd probably want to see is a break through these lows and then, you know, a continuation of this pattern. But I think right now the burden is on the bears to prove it. The bulls, I think, kind of have this right now. Uh, and the path of least resistance for me is higher, maybe to retest that $2,400 price on gold. And the dollar index is supported here by this uh, stronger than expected or higher than expected inflationary number today. Remember, higher expected higher than expected inflation means interest rates may not come down as soon as people thought higher for longer is generally considered bullish for the dollar because again that means that the dollar the interest rate offered by the us is going to be higher relative to its peers making the dollar look more attractive and a quick look at the vix which continues to decline here we saw the vix jump up as high as 21 and now giving back a lot of that momentum uh perhaps markets calming down a little bit which is what that is kind of suggesting and i do still have this short position on the euro though it is floating slightly in the red you can see it narrowly missed 
missed hitting my stop loss here, uh, but I am still in the trade as long as we can hold where we currently are or go lower. I'll stay in the trade. I'm looking for a move lower on the euro dollar, and if this one stops out, I may attempt a second time uh, at a deeper retracement point. So right now, euro dollar looking okay, but um, another one we got to talk about is the dollar yen, which exploded higher. We had some uh, commentary from the Bank of Japan, and you can see just a continuation of this uh, do dollar dominance, right? The dollar just continues to push higher. We're trading at 156.8. I think that might be, is that an all-time, all-time high? I think it might be. Yeah, that might be an all-time high for the dollar yen exchange, which is crazy. You can see this is just weeks upon weeks of upward momentum here, and uh, bulls just continue to compete in complete control. Um, I mentioned that I would have been a buyer on a pullback, but that has come and gone, and we've just kept going higher. So for me, I still think that this has room to expand higher. Uh, perhaps it's due for a correction or a pullback at some point, but I think it would probably be short-lived. And right now, momentum just very strongly favors the dollar. The pound USD did travel higher here, retesting this 1.2550 level. It does seem to be already reacting slightly to this area. We'll see if this can roll over and continue lower. I think there is good confirmation when we look at the Edge Finder's top setups algorithm and we sort just by major currency pairs. I've pointed this out many times, but look at this. I mean, you have have several very strong signals in favor of the US dollar. And as long as that continues to be the case, I'm going to be looking to buy the dollar on pullbacks wherever I can. And I mentioned this chart yesterday, but I thought it was so fascinating that I wanted to talk about it again. So this is the AAII Investor Sentiment Survey. And I love this indicator because it allows us for, especially for index traders, if you trade NASDAQ, Dow, Gold, it's a, I mean, uh, the S&P, if you trade any of the US indices, this is exceptionally interesting information because because what this tells you is it surveys a bunch of people for you and it basically says are people feeling bullish or bearish and we first uh, for the first time in you know the edge finders recording of this data um, the first time we've seen bears actually outweigh the bulls and this is rare because usually people are generally more bullish on stocks than they are bearish right companies typically do grow over time but right now the outlook for company growth is really poor i guess and we're now starting to see sellers get really aggressive um, so when we take a look at that and we compare it to what the s p 500 is doing I actually would take this as a potentially contrarian indicator and perhaps even a bullish signal. Now that people are starting to get outright bearish on the S&P, perhaps this thing can just kind of climb the wall of worry, if you will, and continue back to the highs. Uh, it's possible, let me just be clear, that this is the low, right? This could be the low of the year even. I'm not saying that, that it can't possibly go lower. We could just be bouncing and then roll over. But my opinion here is there's a pretty good shot that we are now finding a bottom and that even if this goes sideways for some time, we may rally from here overall. Now, as confusing as that might be, you have to remember that indices trade off of earnings as well as the macro environment. Is inflation problematic? Is the Fed going to be adversarial or in our favor? That's the questions you have to ask if you are, in fact, an index trader. So right now where we're left in, where we're left off is okay earnings have been pretty good right pretty exciting in fact even for some names like you know overall meta google microsoft they're pretty good earnings and you combine that with uh, it's an election year, then you also say um, that we have a lot of momentum and usually momentum lasts throughout a year in the stock market. Not always, but a lot of the time. Um, and you have a lot of economic growth and you have a Fed that overall still wants to cut rates, whether they do it now uh, or, or sooner or later, as long as they still are in the path of wanting to cut rates, I remain cautiously bullish on stocks. Now, again, as I mentioned, I will be waiting for a signal from the edge finder before I really can get long or uh, short. Right now, uh, we are seeing the S&P 500 get a neutral reading on the edge finder. And so not really anything for me there. But if we do flip bullish on the trend, that could completely reverse this score from neutral and turn it into a bullish one. So if we continue to trend up, that's actually going to be my signal that maybe we go higher from here. So I'll keep an eye on that. All right, now we can do a quick little update on some of my options trades currently. So let's start off I'll go from the top here we'll just go down so I have uh, a options position on let's see SMH so this is the first one you can see uh, that I am currently floating a nice little profit on this one up four hundred and seventy seven dollars we poked over bought I'm sorry oversold here and I went ahead and sold some puts on uh, SMH here we're looking at a daily chart by the way 
sold puts uh, out of the money and with this reversal we are looking good on that trade uh, while we still could get a sign technically on this one i would actually be fine with assignment in that case xlk it, this is today uh, should be an interesting day how we close if we continue to rip higher i may not get assigned uh, but where we currently sit i'm near my break even price already so i sold puts which means i may need to buy the shares today the expiration day is today the 26th of april and so if at the end of the day we are at or below this level, I will be required to buy 10 contracts worth at $200. That is uh, 1,000 shares at $200. That's how much XLK or technology ETF. Uh, this is uh, companies like, you know, all of your all of your big tech names, right? Your Metas, your Amazons, your your Googles, your NVIDIAs, all those companies in one ETF. So if this does get assigned today, I'd be happy to own it. Again, I am tentatively bullish overall in the market. Even if my momentum trading strategy isn't giving me signals, sometimes I can still get signals from my second strategy, which is what we're talking about here, my options or mean reversion style trading. XLY is the next one. So this one is actually looking really good now. Um, this one's come all the way back from the dead. I was looking like I would get assigned at a pretty bad price, but now with this reversal, thanks to Tesla earnings, right? Tesla earnings and a rebound in sentiment here recently uh, in the market just slightly, now puts me in the green on this position by about a thousand bucks. So today is assignment day. If this is below price, uh, if this is below 175, which is the strike price on this option, I will get assigned. Otherwise, I will keep the full premium, which is about $1,300. So um, we'll see how that one plays out. XLE, don't have a position, not quite overbought or oversold. XLP, not quite either way. Um, XLF, TLT, I do have a position. This one's uh, trying to fight back here a little bit, but still in the red very much. So um, as bonds have really gotten hammered recently with stronger than expected economic data, pushing interest rate yields higher, right? So yields are up, so bond values go down. XLC, check this out. So this one has also come back pretty aggressively. Um, dropped hard on meta earnings. XLC is the communication services ETF. That's gonna be companies like, um, you know, social media companies like meta and internet services like Google um, and also telecom services like Verizon and AT&T. So this is a basket of stocks here as well. And uh, I would love to own some of those, but it looks like I'm going to avoid assignment and just collect the premium. So the pre premium that I'll collect today will probably be around neighborhood of about $500. And this does in fact also um, expire today. So those options expiring worthless means that I just collect the full premium as the option seller. By the way, if you trade options or you're interested in them, you can sign up with the brokerage that I'm using here. I absolutely love Weeble. I've used it for a number of years for all of my, well, most of my active trading. Um, it's one of my my main accounts that I use frequently in my channel. So if you guys are, are interested in signing up with Weeble, you can get more information down below in the description. There's a link to Weeble. There's also several other brokerages listed down there. If you don't qualify for Weeble, it's only available in like the US and a few other countries, but I've got some great alternatives. If you're looking to trade CFDs like XAUUSD, or if you're looking to trade, um, you know, shares or whatever you want to trade, several brokerages linked down below in the description will be a perfect fit for you. And most of them have some special free signup perks. So check them out. It's free money down there in the description. It's a, it's like a, it's like candy land down there. So thank you very much for for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, hit that thumbs up button and we'll see you next time. If you're looking to improve as a trader, we've got some cool free resources here that I wanted to share as we close today's video. Down below in the description, there is a link to join our Discord channel or our Telegram channel. And we also have our website, a1trading.com, where traders can get access to free course material to help you improve as a trader. Remember, we are also live Monday through Friday on this channel around 9.30 a.m. US Eastern, broadcasting most live news events and that sort of thing. So hope to see you there. And also we do have a couple videos here showing up on the screen. If either of these seems like it might be helpful to you, then make sure to click here or here and we'll see you there.